Have you ever noticed that you can go 95% of your life and never hear a particular phrase? But then suddenly, the phrase or word that you've never used is used so often, you just can't help to not take notice. Why have I never heard this before? Why is it being used so much now? Overall, I'm not ashamed to say, I'm a fairly simple person with very simple vocabulary. Fancy talking isn't my strong point, so when I hear phrases being used more and more often, I have to wonder, is it just me that's being exposed to this fancy talk more, or is it something else? Let me know if you find yourself in the same boat. So, without further ado, let's use one of those fancy new phrases. Over the last two months, Thursday has been synonymous with an informational blog post about Farming Simulator 25. With the release of FS25 on November 12th, this makes today's blog post the penultimate Thursday info drop from Giants, and it is a doozy. There's something to say about magic, and that's when something unexplainable happens. And to some degree, the implementation of ground deformation is magic. Because even with the explanation in today's blog post, it's just easier to think of tractor drives over dirt, magic happens, and the ground depresses. Today, we get exactly what we've asked for, and it's absolutely outstanding to see. While it's functionally way over my head to grasp the ins and outs of how it's done, I can appreciate the complexity in implementing such a feature so that when I'm critical of how it looks, or at least how I feel it looks based on my experiences, I can at least appreciate the amount of effort that went into producing the effects we do have. And for that, hats off Giants and specifically hats off to Mr. Eddie Edwards, Senior Software Engineer. You sir are a genius in my book. So let's sit down and put on our thinking caps, so to speak, because Mr. Edwards is about to teach us a thing or three. What a better way to emulate reality than to model the simulation on reality. When looking at the real world, the amount of a material that deflects is based on its rigidity. For a material like concrete or asphalt, that's fairly simple because it does not really change state. Once it's dry, its rigidity, for the sake of the rest of the discussion, its firmness is set regardless if it's wet, cold, warm, to some degree. But for the ground, soil or dirt, and to a lesser extent, gravel, its firmness can change based on how dry or wet it is, and for the gravel, how wet the soil under the gravel layer is. Also, in a discussion, we'll be referring to viscosity versus moisture levels, knowing that the more viscous soil is, the wetter it is. So for soil, think of the extremes of soupy mud versus dry, cracked, parched earth. Another way of looking at it is how thick is something. When you pour liquid, does it flow out quickly or does it flow out slowly? Let's talk about snow. It's light, it's fluffy, and anyone who's made snow angels can attest it's not very firm, and as such, you don't really think about driving on snow more than just thinking about driving through the snow. I see snow as having some interesting properties because it has, in my opinion, a low grade with respect to firmness, but it's also not very viscous. If you had a glass that was put out and snow fell into it naturally, if you tried to pour the snow out, it wouldn't flow out, it would more or less slide out as a whole. Yet at the same point in time, you can easily poke your finger into the middle of the snow in the glass. It has very little resistance. Meanwhile, same glass, filled with mud, well it'd pour out where its thickness would be based on how wet it was and pushing your finger into the mud would receive little resistance at first but the further you pushed your finger down into the mud the more resistance you would feel. In theory because the further down from the surface you went the less viscous and the firmer the soil would be. Now you may be thinking to yourself where is this guy going? Is this just rambling of an old man? Just hold on for a minute. In our finger analogy, we have another factor. And given how much a material deforms, which in essence is how much force is being applied. For the purpose of farming simulator and ground deformation, we're referring to the weight of a vehicle or implement as well as the contact patch where the vehicle or implement contacts the ground. 
it's much like the old trick of a guy laying on a bed of nails and not being harmed. If you lay it on a single nail, well that puppy's gone right on through because it has very little resistance because its full weight is being applied at a single contact point. So let's say it weighs 150 pounds. Then the effective pressure on that single contact point would be 150 pounds applied to the surface area of a pointed nail. If 20 nails were placed on the bed and he laid down, the force being applied to any one point would be 1 20th of that of the single nail. Even though he weighs the same, his weight is now spread out over 20 different points. If he lays down a bed of 150 nails, there is in effect one pound of pressure being applied to each nail head, resulting in very little deformation of the skin at each pressure point. As such, tire or track selection will be key to ground deformation effect in Farming Simulator 25. Wide tires will deform the ground less than narrow tires. Dual tires will deform the ground over a wider area, but the net effect will be less than singles. Tracks will have the least impact and as such will have the least amount of deformation because the contact patch with the ground is significantly higher with a tracked vehicle versus the same vehicle with singles or duals. The final factor into ground deformation is how long the force is being applied and will it have a greater compounding effect. You may have seen an old car or truck that's been sitting for ages and it's sunk into the ground a fair bit over time. Yet, if you'd have that same truck or car drive over the ground, it would have a near zero effect on the ground because it's being driven at a reasonable speed versus sitting in the exact same place year after year after year. I'm sure someone will think of it, but yes, fast farming would in theory deform the soil less than traditional farming speeds. Now that we've broken down the general principles of what's going on when a particular surface deforms, the key thing to do is how vehicles and implements in the game react to this deformation and how is that translated to us, the player. The blog post puts in quotes around the word feel and it has me wondering, does that mean that we're gonna have a different kind of force feedback in FS25 from what we had in 22? Some will argue we didn't have force feedback in 22 because we didn't get the jolt in the wheel when we drove off the road onto the field or a dirt path. We didn't feel the bumps relayed to us via our wheel or controller as we moved across a hilly or rocky area. We didn't feel the plow furrows if we drove across them. Now I've used a wheel in FS17 through 22. And I can say in 22 we did have force feedback to some extent, but it was more or less implemented to emulate the feel of power steering, and that's it. In FS17 and 19, the wheel I used was totally void of all resistance. It would turn left or right and stay in that position until it's moved back manually. In 22, there was a light resistance, and if you give the vehicle throttle while in a turn, the wheel will, to some extent, want to turn itself back to center. Now this isn't a centering spring effect where if you let go, it'll spring back to center on its own. It's more like how your car would want to return to center as if you are accelerating out of a corner. The quote from the blog post goes like this. You will feel the tractor bumping over the ground and you will see it creating ruts and tracks. And if you go back and drive over those ruts or tracks, you will feel the effect from them as well. It's harder to steer if you have dug into the ground like real life. Driving in the rain will be more difficult than driving when it's sunny. The use of feel in that quote multiple times has me wondering if we'll have more force feedback in our wheels and our controllers as we are playing and driving across plow furrows or if we find ourselves in a rut that we'll have to really pull and hold onto the wheel in order to drive up and out of that rut. To that end, I'm actually looking forward to trying out plowing. While I do not see this technique being used with the tractor and plow in these images, I've always heard if you plowed properly, you would put one of your rear tires in the rut of the previous run and the tractor would stay its course because it took a good amount of effort to turn up and out of that rut. 
The blog post states that plying will now create real physical furrows, which are not only visual, but will have actual physics applied to them to affect the tractors driving over them. Wheels will bounce as they ride the peaks and the troughs, whereas tracks will mostly smooth out the experience by riding on top of the furrows. All of this is cool and all, but how does it work under the surface? And this is where the tech comes into play and where it's really cool, but it's also way over my head and where Mr. Edwards obtains his genius merit badge. Whereas in previous farming simulator titles, the train had a resolution of one half of a meter. So elevation changes had to occur in a 0.5 meter grid. With FS25 and the introduction of ground deformation, the resolution had to be increased. So it was at a point where now the terrain resolution is four times higher with a grid size of 12.5 centimeters, or for those of us in America, five inches. So kind of to analogize this, in FS22, we could cut a path through the ground with a minimum width of 0.5 meters or one and a half feet. In FS25, we can cut the same path through the ground but it's just gonna be 12.5 centimeters or five inches wide. This makes the terrain resolution file 16K by 16K for a standard two kilometer square map, which comes out to be 256 megapixel size, where the map itself is just four megapixels, where it has a resolution of one pixel being one meter at the map level. What's staggering is to do the math and expand this to a 4x map or a 16x map to maintain the same 12.5 centimeter resolution on a 4x map. The train later would need to be four times larger or 1000 megapixels. Google says that's a gigapixel. And a 16x map, which is four times larger than a 4x map, would have to have a four gigapixel terrain map to maintain that same 12.5 centimeter resolution that somewhat realistic ground deformation needs. Of course, all this fine detail comes at a cost. So to keep FS25 from having to be run on a cluster of supercomputers, optimizations had to be made. Let's think of this like your eye. You can measure the distance that you can see super fine details in inches or centimeters. The distance you can see average details is measured in feet or meters. And the distance that you can see general approximation of details is often measured in a fraction of miles or kilometers. For example, you can see a tree covered hillside from a mile away. From a half mile away, you might be able to make out select breaks where there are larger or smaller gaps with respect to tree spacing. From a quarter mile away, you can see individual trees. And from 100 yards away, you can probably tell which tree or trees have marker paint on them. And from a closer distance, you could identify individual trees by their bark patterns. The same is done in the game, where a player who has not yet been to a specific location or is looking off in the distance, there's a light version of the density map that is loaded into memory. Since a lot of this terrain and texture mapping is done at the CPU level versus the GPU level, a DPU was developed as part of version 10 of the Giants engine. The DPU stands for Density Map Processing Unit, which runs on the CPU and acts as a small GPU emulator. By the use of this new DPU, calculations on density maps can be done at a much higher speed now than previously at four times the resolution scaling of detail on top of that. At the heart of these optimizations is SIMD. If you're like me and you're not a computer science major, then you may be wondering, what is SIMD? So I looked it up. To summarize the Wikipedia article linked in the description, SIMD or single instruction multiple data is a form of parallel processing in which a computer with multiple processing elements, and I'm gonna read into this cores and threads, can perform the same operation on multiple points of data at the same time. These computers exploit data level parallelism that is not concurrency. 
there are simultaneous computations being done using the same instruction set at any given time using different data. The article explains a common use for SIMD is adjusting the contrast of a digital image or the volume of digital audio. FarmSim25 makes use of more SIMD optimizations in its code base than any other FS previously. Now, with respect to other optimizations, the calculations related to vehicle collision physics were increased to exceed the increase in resolution of the terrain. Moving from a terrain resolution of 0.5 meters to 1.25 meters or 12.5 centimeters, it was a 4x increase in each direction or an overall increase in the factor of 16. Using the old code from FS22, calculations on how vehicles would interact with the ground would take 16 times longer. Now, I know I'd be like, oh crap, what are we gonna do? Well, Mr. Edwards, in his genius, he just says, well, let's just optimize the calculation. Maybe by 30 times. That way, it's twice as fast as it needs to be as a result of the 16x increase in complexity. Done. Now, before we wrap this up, let's circle back to my example previously of looking at a hillside full of trees from a distance. The way the game does this is that at some distance, the visual effect that deform the ground does not need to be done by actual changing the ground heights. Instead, textures can be used to make it appear deformed. So, the example used in the article is a tractor driving on a distant hillside. From a distance, you can see the tractor is leaving tracks on the field behind it. But the terrain is not actually being deformed because there's no need to make all of those calculations at that viewing distance. Instead, textures are used to make those tracks appear as if they're there. As you walk toward that hillside, the textures represented by low resolution triangles are transformed into higher resolution triangles, which are then used to calculate the actual deformation once the player is close enough to be reasonably expected to see that detail. This technique uses what is called terrain quad tree mesh. Now I have some serious newfound respect for the complexities that went into developing the ground deformation system that is in place for FS25. The fact that the ground deforms not only when you're in the field, but also when you're driving on a dirt road or a gravel road or just through the forest or grass is incredible. Other games, which we have pointed to as having ground deformation, do not go into that extreme. The complexity with Farm Sim is that nearly anywhere could be a field, so everywhere needs to support the deformation on the fly. I really did enjoy reading through this article a few times because it took a while to sink in and fully process. I encourage everyone to go read the blog post for yourself just to make sure I didn't overly simplify something here with my layman's interpretations. I look forward to seeing what the release version of the deformation looks like. I have voiced my concerns over it in the past and how some things look overdone with respect to the deformation. Even in the build that we had from the FS25 preview event where the field deformation wasn't too far off the realm of believable, for me, the deformation what should be fairly well compacted dirt outside the field had a greater level of deformation being applied and at that point it just felt a bit overdone. Now being a whole new system it may take some time to tweak the math so to speak and I do hope that there is a setting in game that lets the player adjust the degree of the deformation that they want to see or experience. A setting from let's say 0 to 100 where 100 is fully intended deformation effect and zero is no deformation physics at all. Given where I've lived and the amount of rock in our soil, I would probably expect to find a nice, for me experience, to be somewhere around 40 or 50. But for now, that's a pipe dream, but it could be reality in 12 days. What do you think of all that you've heard so far and read in today's blog post? Let me know in the comments, especially if you feel that in my interpretations of the blog post, I misrepresented it in some way. As I said at the start of this blog post, I'm a simple man with simple pleasures trying to understand a complex concept 
in as simple a terms as possible. If you simply like this video for what it's worth, then please hit that thumbs up button. It tells YouTube that the video should simply be referred to more folks than it has been in the past. I've been trying to reach 50,000 subs by the launch of FS25 by simply asking you guys if you're not subscribers to click on the corresponding button below the video. If you've not done so, please do it as it's a fairly simple thing to do. Are you simply taken back at the work that has gone into FS25 at this point and are ready to pre-order? If so, then I've just got one more simple request. It would aid me in my simple pleasures in life if you know that you would take this opportunity to use my field link in the description below. Doing so helps out twofold. First, it gets you an eShop code from the Giants eShop in order to download the game at most likely midnight November 12th CET. This has historically been the fastest way of getting access to Farm Sim or its subsequent DLC releases. Plus, I do get a small kickback financially and it does help me inch closer to becoming a gold tier partner. Regretfully, if you prefer to order from Steam, I don't have anything for you. Sorry. If you're on console or you've been eyeing up the perks of that collector's edition, then I have an Amazon affiliate link in the description where you can select either the collector's edition for PC, the standalone physical version for PC, and do note that both of the those versions come with an eShop code to download the game again from the Giants eShop on midnight November 12th. If you do have a PlayStation 5 or Xbox Series X or S, then you can also select a physical disc version for your respective platforms as well. It's not too late to order and have delivered on or around launch day. Until tomorrow, when we get our next drop of fact sheets, happy farming.